Blue Tech last year, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I knew technology, I'd worked in the industry for a long time, um, and I knew that I had a service that would be valuable, especially for other small business owners. But I really didn't know what it would take to run an organization. When you are the owner of an organization, uh, you're ultimately responsible for everything that that organization does on a daily basis. Um, you're responsible for managing the finances, managing your employees, uh, developing a product or a service. Um, you're the head of marketing and sales and strategy and operations development. Um, there are a thousand things that pull you in a million different directions every single day. Uh, that's especially complicated when you consider that every business that's operating today has to use technology in some way or another. Everyone needs a website, everyone needs uh, phones, computers, tablets, um, software, um, application-based tools uh, that help them uh, run the daily operations. But how do you do that when you don't come from a technical background? How do you leverage technology when you really don't understand what technology is or why it's important or how to appropriately manage it? Well, today I'm gonna try to share a few tips and tricks that I hope will help you uh, along the way as you develop your business and you start thinking about expansion strategies. Um, we'll look at a couple of the things that Blue Tech recommends for every single one of our clients at the fundamental level. Uh, and hopefully they'll help you understand how to make not only your use of technology efficient, but also scalable for the long term. Uh, so stick around and we will jump right into it. I'm Alex with Blue Tech, and this is your Tuesday Tech Tip. Let's get it. All right, guys, I'm going to break this down into the five things that your business needs in order to successfully integrate technology into the workflow. So don't make the mistake of assuming that these are things that you can necessarily do yourself. Like we said before, you as the business owner have a lot that has to be addressed. There's a lot on your plate and uh, managing your technology is one of the more sensitive components of business ownership. Even though we're breaking things down into five categories, each one of these categories can be further broken down and managed by their own individual teams. And large organizations, large companies very frequently will have uh, dedicated teams for each one of these categories. So let's take a look at what each one of those categories are and we'll discuss uh, for just a minute why each of them are important for you as a business owner and what kind of value they bring to your organization. So number one, we're looking at endpoint security specifically. That means the security of the devices that your employees are operating on. This is usually a laptop, a desktop, a server, uh, phones, tablets, whatever. Um, some of the important components that you need to consider when you're looking at um, at securing those endpoints are uh, adequate usage policies. You need to make sure that you understand everything that your employees are doing uh, on those devices and you need to make sure that each one of those devices has strong antivirus or anti-malware solutions installed on them uh, to try and prevent some of those uh, common malicious applications from running. Usage policies can include things like uh, not allowing users to have administrative rights on a computer. This is one that I run into constantly. I cannot tell you how frustrating it is for IT managers to deal with administrative rights on, an, uh, on, on workstations. And it's a difficult thing to remove once you've allowed it. So if you're in the startup phase of business development, this is, this is one of those areas where you can get an easy win right off the bat. Do not allow your users to have administrative rights. So the reason this is so important is that uh, administrative rights allow for applications of any type to be run so long as the user uh, that is running the application has permission to run it at any level on the machine. Um, an administrator can essentially do anything. Uh, an administrator can delete anything that's on a computer, can run any kind of malicious application that wants to run on the computer, even if your malware application says not to. Um, administrators have the ability to delete system files. So that leads us into number two. 
updates and patching. And not just not just standard updates and patching, not just turning on automatic updates and leaving it. No, updates and patching should be remotely controlled and remotely distributed by someone who knows what they're doing. So the reason this is so important is that the majority of malware that's out there runs by exploiting um, unpatched vulnerabilities on the systems that they target. Uh, if you look back to 2017, there was a famous attack that took advantage of uh, a, a vulnerability called the Eternal Blue uh, vulnerability. This was something that ran on Windows-based systems and exploited a weak file sharing protocol called SMB version 1. This was something that Microsoft was aware of and they had actually patched earlier that year. They distributed patches, I think it was in May of that year. Uh, to Windows-based workstations. But a lot of people, a lot of organizations didn't adequately distribute those updates for one reason or another. And so the reason the Eternal Blue vulnerability was so prolific in the marketplace was that um, poor patching practices in large organizations allowed it to propagate itself. And so you saw large companies like Maersk or the NHS over in England uh, get taken advantage of immediately and the virus or the malware was allowed to spread um, without much hindrance um, and it created a lot of damage. I think Maersk suffered to the tune of around 300 million dollars after everything was said and done. So that was a pretty big one and it all could have been prevented by adequate patching and updating. Okay, so let's look at uh, category number three, event monitoring. Uh, specifically remote event monitoring. It's important for organizations to have someone who knows what they're looking at monitoring events on the back end, looking for things like uh, performance failures, um, hardware failures, looking for hard disk uh, storage issues, someone who can look at configuration problems uh, and view all of this remotely, someone who can constantly look to make sure that uh, the policies that you're enforcing within the first category are actually being applied adequately or actually being distributed. You want someone to be able to identify when systems haven't been patched uh, properly. Um, and so again, it's, it's just really important that you hire a, a good IT service provider to watch for those misconfigurations, those, um, those malware events, to watch for things going wrong because very often they'll be able to alert you before you even realize that something's happened in the first place. Uh, and if they're worth their weight in gold, then they will not only tell you when something's going wrong, but they'll very often fix it before you even uh, before you're even aware that a problem existed in the first place. Um, I very frequently tell my customers that IT service providing is the sort of thing where you don't realize it's working when it's working properly, um, and that's the way that it should be. Moving on to number four, help desk. Help desk is more valuable than most people realize. Um, at the very least, your employees will thank you endlessly for having a good help desk solution in place. Someone providing uh, help desk is constantly looking out for your employees. They're there when things go wrong. If a printer dies or a um, hard drive fails or uh, your network goes down for whatever reason, the help desk is there to get things back up and running uh, smoothly and efficiently. Um, I can't tell you how many people I have come across in my career who are nothing but frustrated uh, with technology because things constantly go wrong uh, and they don't know what to do about it and they're constantly having to spend money to fix problems along the way. Well, if you've got a good service provider, a good IT service provider, they're going to include um, help desk as one of the baseline offerings in whatever package you get from them. And that help desk is gonna be available as much as, or as frequently as you want it. Um, there are opportunities to have 24 seven help desk access if you think your employees might need that. Very often it's just during normal business hours, but having that person that you can call when things go wrong uh, brings a ton of value to the organization. It just keeps things moving the way that things should move. So now we're gonna talk about number five. And this is the big one. This is the one that will save you when things inevitably go wrong. When you get hit with that malware, when ransomware comes a calling, when a hard drive fails, when, when you lose data, you accidentally delete something, this is the one that's gonna save you. 
and that's a reliable data backup and recovery process. You have to have this one in place. In particular, you should have something that's cloud-based or at least off-premises that allows you to recover quickly and efficiently. If your server crashes, uh, if your file storage system crashes, if your CEO's workstation goes down, you need to be able to bring that person or that service back online quickly. Um, and you need to know that the backup and recovery solution that you have in place uh, is going to be reliable. Um, not only that, but you should also make sure that you are testing that recovery solution at least once a year, if not more frequently. Um, you never know when changes are made uh, that may affect how the implementation or the application of that backup uh, may be affected. So uh, if you can, look for good backup and recovery sources. This is something that we, that we actually require for our customers to have in place at Bluetech. If they want to manage it themselves, that's fine so long as they have something in place because inevitably something will go wrong and you will have to rely on those backups. So that about does it. Uh, those are the five things that we at Bluetech recommend for every one of our clients. Um, like I said before, these are complicated things to administer. They're, they're complicated technologies to control. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to hire a good and reputable service provider, uh, then you 100% should. Well, that about does it for this week. I, I hope you found the video helpful. Um, if you have questions or you want some clarification on a few points, uh, or if you'd like help implementing some of these strategies, feel free to reach out to us. You can leave a comment down below. We usually try to uh, respond quickly to any questions that you have. Uh, likewise, you can find us on social media at bluetechllc.com. Uh, you can also find us on our website at www.bluetechllc.com. Um, we have a contact form on there. Feel free to use it to reach out to us um, and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Aside from all that, we're pretty much done for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you all uh, have a good week and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.